Hi there. My name is Laura Woods. I am the mental health counselor at Marine Creek Leadership Academy in Lake Worth ISD, and I work for communities and schools of the greater Tarrant County area. And I wanted to talk to y'all today a little bit about unrecognized childhood trauma and behaviors that are associated with that. Um, and the reason why I kind of thought about this is oftentimes when we think of the word trauma, we think of some of those bigger in your face things like physical assault, sexual assaults, um, you know, a car wreck that, that someone's in. But in reality, children oftentimes go through things that are considered traumatic that we might not be able to recognize um, as easily. And so with that said, things like lack of food, heat, or electricity, um, witnessing or experiencing a serious car accident. So not actually being in the car, but just witnessing something traumatic like a car wreck. Um, can have an impact on a kid. A parent's divorce or an intense custody battle. And um, a death of a close relative, growing up in a home that lacked affection. Um, instilling an intense pressure to succeed. Um, so relatives who put this sense of perfection on the child can be considered traumatic when they feel like they're not able to meet those expectations. Incarcerated parents, um, reversal roles between a parent and child. So is the child having to take care of mom because she's not getting out of bed because there's some type of alcohol or drug addiction in the home? Is there a lack of attachment um, are important things to know. But the, the point of that is, do you recognize if a child you work with is going through these things? Are you aware of what their home environment is like? Do you know who their caregivers are? Is there a change in their behavior from maybe last year to this year? And those could be indicators that there might be more going on with the child. Um, and something that I really wanted to pinpoint it on is oftentimes the behaviors of a child who might have gone through something traumatic can make them seem problematic. It can make them seem disruptive, or they are disruptive. Um, and it's not easy to deal with, but it's important to recognize that there might be something going on and we need to treat the root cause of the issue. So whatever, um, you know, if there's abuse or neglect in the home, for instance, we need to be treating that and helping the child um, meet their physiological and safety needs. Um, according to Maslow's hierarchy of values, is it's hard to focus on things like math in class or on reading when the child isn't having their basic safety needs met um, or going through traumatic experiences. And so um, with that said, um, some of the trauma symptoms according to the DSM is um, difficulty concentrating, anger, irritability, mood swings, lack of self-worth, anxiety and fear, um, guilt, shame, self-blame, withdrawing from others, sadness, hopelessness, feeling disconnected or numb. And, um, and so if you see that in a child that you're working with, um, whether it be in the classroom, whether it be, you know, in, in, like I said, in your work setting or at home with your own child, it's important to start asking questions, to start looking around, to start kind of digging in and asking the child if there's more going on and what is going on. Um, and if you do feel like there is a child who is being abused or neglected or um, going through any type of trauma, it's really important to um, reach out to someone who can help. And so reaching out to a therapist or if there's any type of um, legal matter involved, then reaching out to Child Protective Services. And if you're afraid to reach out to them, I know it can be scary for the first time contact someone like the school counselor or a principal or a trusted loved one who would have experience with this and get them to help you, you know, work through that. Um, because oftentimes if you're nervous to speak up for the child about suspected um, trauma that might be going on, the child's not going to do it themselves. And so we have to make that sacrifice for the kids um, and really be looking out for them. And my last point is I want to make a point that Children aren't bad kids just because they have destructive behaviors. They are products of their environment, and oftentimes, you know, what they see or what they're not taught um, can play into how they're behaving around you or in classrooms. Um, and so if they, you know, easily anger and don't calm down, they probably were never modeled any of those coping skills. They might not have the emotion regulation because it was never taught to them of how to work through big feelings. And so just coming with that children with a huge sense of empathy because oftentimes those most difficult children are going through the most or have gone through the most. And so keeping that in the back of your mind when working with children um, because they really need us to um, help protect them, keep them safe, but also um, to, to care for them and empathize with them. So um, that's all for today. Thank you so much.